Welcome to Tomorrow's World Today, a show dedicated to the discovery of innovation and cutting edge technology to be featured in the park of the future. The park includes four worlds. The worlds are inspiration, creation, innovation, and production. Each one will showcase the latest developments from the greatest companies and smartest people in the world. This is Inventionland World Headquarters. Here now is George Davison. George, traffic keeps getting worse and worse. I mean, is it just me or is everything over here constantly under construction? Uh, well, infrastructure is important to an organized and civilized society tomorrow. Well, there was nothing civilized about my commute this morning. Wow, this is the first time I've seen a grouchy Tamara. But I agree with you, nonstop construction, that isn't fun for anybody. Not if you want to actually get anywhere on time. Whew, all right, shaking it off. <laughs> but we are actually going to have to figure out a solution to this, because this park of ours is going to be built in no time. And we have to figure out ways that are fast, easy, and cost effective for our customers to get there, no matter where they're coming from. Well, like every solution in history, Tamara, these problems will be solved with good ideas and technology. And teleportation. <laughs> <laughs> like but that. until we figure that out, we are going to have to come up with more efficient ways to use our infrastructure, our roads, our waterways, airports, trains. And I know you always like a good challenge. So what's going to be first, air, land, or sea? There's my old Tamara. All right. Your first stop is going to be Las Vegas. Why Las Vegas? Because Las Vegas is the home to a legion. And they're doing things a little differently out there. They're really helping the rural towns get access to the air. All right, deal me in. Not so fast. While you're in Vegas, I'd like you to investigate the sky a little lower. Are you making a short joke? No, we're talking drones. I'd like you to go see this company called Unique and see their hexacopter. It'd be great if our guests could come to our park by drone. All right. It is time to solve the travel issues of the future. Have a good trip. I'm here in Summerlin, which is a suburb just outside of Las Vegas. And inside this unassuming building is the command center for Allegiant Airlines. George has sent me here to investigate airline scheduling systems and to see if I can suss out some innovative ways that we can get people from all over the country to our park of the future. Hi, you must be Maury. I'm Tamara. Tamara, good morning. Welcome to Allegiant. I hear that if we want to learn about new models of how to move people around the country, you're the guy to talk to. We've got a good way of doing it. Come on, let's go in and take a look. The uh, business model is pretty unique. We're getting people into the transportation system who normally travel almost just about once a year. And as we get into a community, we bring service levels and access to the transportation system that otherwise they wouldn't have, certainly at a price level they did, wouldn't have. This is essentially our model from a 30,000 foot level. We've got 120 cities, and then yeah. we have our destinations down here with where you see the white stars. This is how we started, right here, Las Vegas. When I got involved in the company in 2001, one of the themes that I understood very quickly was if we're gonna be here and we think we can compete flying to LA and beat Southwest American United, no. So we wanna go where they ain't. Yeah. And let's go out to this world here. I joke that these are islands surrounded by grass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're in Rapid City, you can't get out of that town very easily at all. But if we can take our business model and move it out here and go back and forth, and the mm -hmm. other side of this, it has to be driven around cost. The way you manage the cost is you keep everybody here. Everybody comes home at night. Pilots mm -hmm. are in their own bed, flight attendants, our mechanics live here. It's mm -hmm. not the most ideal marketing schedule, but what it does is gives me a cost structure that I can offer a price that's gonna stimulate these folks to come here. We carry 11, 12 million people a year, mm -hmm. and those are people I strongly believe would not be in the transportation system, but for what we're offering as a product. How has bringing an active airline into these more rural locations affected those communities? Well, we provide jobs in places, and mm -hmm. you know, when you come into the town, you're adding to the economic impact. We've been able to go into places that have lost service or didn't have much service. We're down in South Florida now in a place called Punta Gorda that we, yeah. the airport didn't have any activity until we showed up. We've been told we're worth as much as four or five hundred million dollars a year of economic impact in that mm -hmm. particular part of the world and that just goes for the rest of this. All your small cities, you know, particularly a lot of your east coast ones that uh, just, you know, have minimal air service. When they get a big jet, uh, it's a big deal to the 
of town. Well, I'd love to get a hands-on look at one of the communities that you guys have come into, see how bringing an active airline in has stimulated things. Why don't you try Clarksburg? West Virginia? Yep, it's a great little town. I think you'll really enjoy the people up there, and they've done a great job working with us as well. And furthermore, once you get there, we'll take you to Florida and down to Sanford or some other places, have a little vacation when you're done. George, I like how he thinks. I'll see you after my vacation. This is a big year for us. We're going back to a single airplane type. Past couple years, we've run three airplane types, and uh, we're excited as all get out because we're gonna be, at that point, uh, really ready to rock and roll. I've made it to Clarksburg, West Virginia. I'm excited to get a hands-on look at the way that an active airline can impact a rural community. Clarksburg, get ready to show me what you got. The airport is huge to the city of Bridgeport and Harrison County and all the surrounding area. We provide jet service from here to Florida and Myrtle Beach by way of Allegiant. It just helped our whole area just grow and put us on the map. Before the jet service arrived, we had to travel to other airports with the daily flights to D.C. and to Chicago. We can travel just about anywhere in the world from right here in north central West Virginia. When I first took the job, I asked a guy, how do you get people to get on airplanes when they're small and little? He said, you got to get your community to take ownership of it. Allegiant has allowed us to get people excited about the airport. They absolutely have created a lot of opportunities for our town, and we're so appreciative of it. Talk to me a little bit about the importance of having an active airport in a rural community like this. An active, vibrant airport is essential to the growth of a small town. It has really created a lot of convenience for our local people to allow them to be able to get anywhere in the world that they want to get to. The most recent economic impact study showed that it does over a billion dollars annually. Wow. You can look at a lot of small airports and most of them you will never see a billion dollar economic impact. You know ours is very unique in the fact that we have a niche aerospace industry. Companies like Lockheed Martin, Bombardier, Pratt & Whitney, Aurora. It's been a great way to diversify our economy, give people opportunities to have a career and continue to make West Virginia a great place that it is. I hear it all the time. You know this is one of the best things that's ever happened to our community. It's just been really uh, rewarding to see the airport grow and see what it means to a new generation. The of my journey has taken me all the way from Clarksburg, West Virginia, here to Sanford, Florida. Today, I'm gonna fire up my flight geek on all cylinders. Captain Eric is gonna give me a hands-on look at the technology of the new A320s. The MD-80 will be missed. It's what made Allegiant become so successful. As Allegiant wants to continue to grow, the Airbus was the choice that Allegiant took to come back to a single fleet type. For you as a pilot, what's the most exciting innovation in this particular cockpit? Probably the fly-by-wire system. The fly -by wire system is very easy to fly with just little inputs into the side stick. Historically, you'd have to continuously move the levers because you had a cable that ran from here all the way out to your engines. With the fly-by-wire system and the computers, it ensures that the aircraft stays within all safety parameters. It allows us to even control our fuel burn. We have what's called a FADEX system, which controls all of the fuel parameters on the engine. We'll set these in one position. The computers on the engines will control the fuel flow needed to maintain climb, maintain cruise, descent, all the way into landing. We have our weather radar, which automatically looks forward of the aircraft and predicts wind shear. Keeps us away from the thunderstorms. Good. With the fly-by-wire system, it already knows what the forces are with all of its computers. Uh, it automatically uh, looks forward of the aircraft and predicts wind shear. You come down to our, our radios for communication and navigation. And one of the nice things about the Airbus is it auto-tunes all the navigation frequencies. So really all you have to do is fly the aircraft. Wow, so there's no manual control whatsoever. You're just, you're just going with the guidance. The aircraft and the computer system start to manage themselves. The system is talking to you, it tells you what the issues are before you may even notice what they are, which makes for a safer flight so the pilot can then focus on flying the aircraft. Hello passengers, welcome aboard. Thanks for boarding our Airbus 320. Today we'll be flying to Clarksburg, West Virginia. Strap in and make yourselves comfortable. Looks like it's going to be a smooth flight. Very good. All right. We're ready to go. Thanks for showing me around. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much for that rare opportunity. Now I'm going to turn you over to our Vice President of Maintenance, Chris Toro. Excellent. 
Hey, Chris. So with the A320, we're going to deliver reliable, safe transportation for our customers in all these rural cities that we love to operate to. And for us to be able to maintain those airplanes predictively makes sure that that airplane is going to be able to make its mission day in and day out. Now, what innovation has excited you the most over the last couple of years? It's been a, a combination of the fly-by-wire technology and really the predictive maintenance. Maintenance for all these years has been very reactive to what has broken. Now, what we're doing with this information is we're being able to see what's going to happen to the airplane. We can actually gather information from 20,000 sensors. We're not reading about information where the component has failed or had gone beyond a limit. We're actually reading parameters that says that this component is now reacting slower or faster. And as we see that, and as the Airbus sees that for us, they're going to be able to tell us when a system is beginning to fail. Our plan is being able to do scheduled maintenance, literally to the point where we should have so few unscheduled events that the reliability for us should go up tremendously. And be, we should be able to go in and out of those small cities that we like to serve without having a problem out there. Because once we break out in the middle of nowhere, you know, it's, it's always a much bigger issue to recover that flight and those folks. George, I think that predictive maintenance is something that we should be adopting for the park and looking at systems that allow us to do that. It's a really good thing to pick up on. Well, George, this has been a great discovery mission. I am getting a literal inside look at engine technology. And the great thing is there are a lot of options for ways to get people to our park, whether they're coming from rural areas or major cities. I think we're in good shape. With all the research I've been doing into flight, there is something I've become fascinated by, drone technology. So today, my mission has brought me to the North American headquarters of Unique. I cannot wait to find out what they're doing with drones. So maybe let's start with the history of the drone. 1999, you might have seen the first quad rotorcopter introduced into the market, but it really didn't take off until maybe 2010. Thereafter, it continued to evolve and more and more people got into it. Great aerial imaging, different ways to capture family photos, vacations, things along Wait, that line. Family photos? You can pre-program it to take off and hover at a certain distance and you can capture selfies. That is a lot more fun than a selfie stick. I kind of feel awkward sticking a stick out in front Nothing of myself. Nothing about this feels good. <laughs> <laughs> so from, from there, people started seeing that they could actually use this to help them get their work done. Some of the early adopters of drone technology, public safety, obviously, police, fire, search and rescue. You also see it in agriculture, inspection and construction, site surveys. It makes their evaluations much easier and faster. I'm really curious about the technology. Do you develop the software in-house or do you work with partners? Yeah, we create some base mapping software that you can use to program grid patterns for flight. But there are other software providers out there that are providing very specific use case software that we partner with. So is your software open source then? It is. We have a software development kit that's available for de developing your software applications for our platform. All right, so tell me about the hardware that I'm looking at here. There are typically two types of drones. You will see a quadcopter, which is a four-bladed drone, and a hexcopter, and this is the hexcopter. The hexcopter has some certain advantages over the quadcopter. In high winds, a hexcopter will be much more stable than a quadcopter. With a hexcopter, you have engine redundancy. So you could lose an engine, mm -hmm. and the copter will still fly. If yeah. you lose an engine on a copter with only four motors, it's going to tumble out of the sky and crash. Some of the other technology you might see is this landing gear retracts, and the camera that hangs below it can then rotate 360 degrees. We make most of the cameras in-house ourselves. With the thermal imaging camera, we partner with a leading developer of thermal imaging cameras. What's the most exciting application of software that you've seen? I think my favorite footage ever is using a feature on our drones called Follow Me. The drone, through a little uh, sensor, yeah. will follow you and keep the camera trained on you no matter what you're doing. That is so cool. Looking forward, where do you see drone technology going in the next five years, the next 10 years? So I think that by having an open source platform, you're going to yeah. see a lot more people developing software for very specific use cases. Imagine having the drone doing something for you inside your home. Drones may be flying security around your own house. So you're going to see more autonomy in the drones, more personal use drones, as well as greater commercial application in varying industries, agriculture, construction, inspection, and clearly public safety is a big one. Where can I go to get a look at these babies in action? So I've set something up for you. I'm gonna send you to Las Vegas to meet with Officer Dave, and he's gonna show you how he's using it. I've set Tamara up at Las Vegas Metro PD, and he's gonna show her how the drone can be used in search and rescue. Tamara being picked up by the police in Vegas, who knows what might happen. Hopefully a drone will capture it for us.
Drones do help save lives, especially out here. We can actually go into canyons. We can go into tight situations where the helicopters can't go. Now, when a person goes missing, timing is of the essence in trying to find them, right? Timing is very, very important, especially out here in Vegas. During the summer, we can get up to about 115, 120 degrees out here. And unfortunately, this is one of the areas that we actually have a lot of missing people in. How do drones figure in finding those people who have gone missing? You see the canyons right here behind us. A lot of places that our helicopters can't go, mm -hmm. so is perfect for the drones because they're, they're small, compact. And the quality of the information that you get from the drones is just as useful, if not more so, than the helicopters? It's actually a little bit more so. It's all high-definition cameras. We can actually move the cameras and pan it the way that we need. And then we can actually program the drone to do like a grid search if we want. What's a grid search? We pick a rectangular area. And I can actually, on my controller, uh -huh. pick an area that I want it to fly autonomous. It flies itself. I can bring it back. I can have other officers looking at the footage so we can do multiple areas while they're looking at footage. And if we do see some, we'll send the team out. Is there any other new technology that you've been especially excited about when it comes to helping out with these missions? The infrared camera, that's helped out a lot. Heat seeking technology is uh, extremely cool, especially up in Mount Charleston when we have the trees and all that. The infrared and the heat seeking will help us find somebody. Well, you may have to find a missing person, but you're never gonna have to find a missing drone with something this bright orange. This orange actually works out great. With the old model, it was like gray and black in color. We'd lose it in the mountains. Now this one, it's got six rotors, and this is the ground control station? Station, yes. OK, it really does look like a video game, I have to say. <laughs> the great thing is we, everything's all in here. I get the picture right here on the screen. So I can sit here and watch it, but I can also transmit it to a TV in our command center. You ready to fly? Are you? Always. All right. Tomorrow would be a great drone student. She's uh, wanting to learn and learn the technology. So look around, make sure everything's clear. There's no one around us. Now clear, going up. Here we go. Whoa! Gonna go up. Now we double check everything. Okay. Make sure all our controls work and we have a good link with it. So we'll go back, forward, left, right. And once we get that, that's when we'll raise the uh, landing gear. Oh, wow. And now we're good to go. Whoa, there it goes. That is a fun toy. So this has the thermal imaging software on it, right? Yes, ma'am. How do you feel about a game of hide and seek? I hide, you seek. Oh, I'm always up for a good challenge. You think you can find me? Oh, about five seconds. You talk a big game. All right, here I go. There's a lot of changes when it comes to the technology and drones. Usually within about two months, there, there's something new coming out. Better equipment, better cameras, better infrared cameras, and that really benefits us when it comes to search and rescue. Yeah, tomorrow uh, kind of got a little ahead of herself there and uh, wanted to challenge me to a little game of hide and seek. You can't beat technology. Lots of places to hide, but she had no place to hide from us. You know, I thought you were just bragging before, but you found me pretty quick. Maybe I need to brush up on my hide-and-seek skills. Just a little. George, there is so much we can do with drones at the park, from security to having some kind of cool drone flying experience. And maybe we can get Officer Dave to come out and give me some flying lessons. Of course. All right. I think all that research I did on vacation routes inspired George because he's taken a few days off and hopped on a flight. But that's OK, because it gives me the time to take care of some very important business, learning how to fly. Turns out our park designer, Stuart, is a first-rate drone pilot, so he's going to give me a lesson. Hey, Stuart, ready for my flying lesson? Hi, uh, Tamara. Uh, we got the uh, unique 520 drone here. It's a hexcopter, right? Exactly. So how do we get this thing in the air? Just one button to take off. And simple as that. I'll give you this controller here. Whoa. All right, give me some basics before I take control, though. OK. This is your throttle, up mm -hmm. and down. Left and right is your rotate. OK, so basically think of this as like the angle. This is that. height. And this is moving left and right, kind of? Yes. Well, I feel like I should take her a little higher. There you go. OK, up. Give her a little spin around. Give her a little spin. Ooh. Oh, there we go. OK. Here she comes. You're getting a good hang of this. You're just going to want to put the landing gear up. That's going to be this switch right here. OK. There you go. Up. Oh. OK, great. Now, when I was in Vegas, the police chief taught me I should always make sure we're clear. So I'm going to do a clear. I like to follow procedure. That's a good idea. Yeah, she moves faster than I thought she would. I don't know why I've decided it's a she, but I'm sure that George is bummed that he is not here for this. Yeah, he'd just crash it anyhow. 
Good point. <laughs> Speaking of crashing, or actually not crashing, how do we land her? Flip that switch down. OK. I don't have to worry about it going into a tree or anything? Nope. It uses GPS, so it knows oh. exactly where it took off. And it'll do it automatically. OK, simple as flipping a switch. Wait, she went up. Oh, it'll come back down. Oh, she went up to flip the landing gear. Yeah. OK. See that? Yeah, we did it. Yes. You are a very good teacher. That was really fun. You know, George and I were talking about how cool it would be to have some kind of drone attraction at the park. You got any ideas? You know what? I have a surprise for you. We have their newest racing drone from Unique. Mm -hmm. You're flying around inside the drone. Wait, you mean like inside? Wait, what? Well, it just looks like you're inside the drone. It uses your phone as a viewpoint. Like virtual reality in a way? Exactly. Hey, can we go fly through the castle? Sure thing. All right. Let's go. Hello. I can totally picture us having some kind of massive indoor drone experience in the park. An obstacle course, precision steering. You're not going to let me try that one, are you? You're going to keep that one all to yourself? Oh! Whoa! <laughs> I felt wind on that one. It's out of control. <laughs>